Hi and welcome to Flock2 Speed and Agility. Today's content will be about speed and agility, skill and capacity issue, physical assessments and the coaching cues and interventions that we're going to use to correct these issues. So first up we're going to compare two athletes, athlete 1 and athlete 2, and determine whether they have a skill or a capacity issue. Here we see athlete 1 performing a linear acceleration from three point start. Athlete 1 has almost full extension of the back leg and no extension of his left arm, so his arm drive won't be optimal. And when he tries to push off, he also does it with his back leg instead of using the front leg to push off. When he goes to his first toe off, you can see that his shin angle and back angle are pretty similar, but that he doesn't have a triple extension in the right leg. So now we're going to look for asymmetry on the other side, so on the right toe off. And we can see here that the angles have changed. He still hasn't reached full extension and his shin and torso angle don't align with each other. From the front, we can see that at the start, he overpronates his right foot. And now we're going to look at the assessment of athlete number one. So the first thing we'll do is look for asymmetries in the shoulders and in the trunk. Because of the sweater it's a little bit harder to see. In the left picture you see some compensation when he fully flexes his right shoulder. You don't see the same compensation on the left, but that's also because he doesn't flex his left shoulder as much. Looking at the knee flexion we can see that the right seems a little bit more impaired than the left side. Next up we have the modified Thomas test to look for any restrictions of the iliopsoas or the rectus femoris. We can see that the hips are very relaxed, but his knees don't bend as much, so this may indicate a restriction of the rectus femoris. Next up, we have the A walk to see how his movement patterns are. We also do the A skip and ankling. And we see that he has a problem with coordination of the arms and rhythm. We use the squat jump for leg power performance and the counter movement jump for reactive strength of the lower limbs. He performs better in the counter movement jump than the squat jump, which should be expected, so there's no capacity issue there. Athletes 1 lack of skill may be attributed to his lack of triple extension during running, his limb coordination, his rhythm, and his history of movement as a basketball player, due to the fact that he's used to backstepping before taking off. And now we're going to watch athlete 2 to determine why he has a capacity issue. So compared to athlete 1 we see a flexion in the back leg and we also see the left arm in extension to use for arm swing during the acceleration. And now we're going to the first toe off on the right side. So what we can see is that the athlete has already come up pretty high and that his shin angle and torso angle are not aligned with each other, but he does have full triple extension on the right leg. When we go to the left side, we see a much better shin angle compared to torso angle and also, again, triple extension on the back. He also seems to swing his arms more compared to athlete 1. When looking from the front, no additional information was gathered compared to what was already seen from the lateral point of view. And now we have the assessment. So first up we're going to look at the knee flexion. We can see that FV2 can't fully flex his knees and that may indicate a flexibility or a mobility issue in the knees. We also use the modified Thomas test to assess if there is a shortening of the rectus femoris or the iliopsoas. It shows that both legs don't touch the table and the knees are still pretty straight, which may indicate decreased flexibility somewhere in the quadriceps or the hip flexors, or possibly both. We also look for mobility issues in the shoulder. We can see that FD2 elevates his right shoulder when left and he doesn't have the same problem on the right. During the 8 walk he has a nice rhythm and we can see that he dorsiflexes the foot in a rhythmic manner. FD2 shows good arm movement but does seem a little bit limited in the flexion he could produce in his hips. During the ankling we see a nice rhythm of the feet. Arms also move in a nice rhythm and he also keeps his head in a neutral, relaxed, forward looking position. And now we're going to compare the squat jump versus the counter movement jump. 
and we can see that the counter movement jump is higher than the squat jump. So, so gathering from this, I think FLE2 is mostly lacking in capacity due to his limited range of motion in the hips, knees, and and the amount of horizontal force production he can produce during the start of the acceleration. And now we're going to part two, the agility t-test, where we're going to look at the side step, the back step, and the braking, lateral and the forwards. And we're going to start again with athlete one, the skill issue. So here we see him performing the agility t-test at normal speed, and then we're going to go through the exercise again. Athlete 1 is in an inactive position with his hand laying on his left knee. When he goes to make the first switch to the left, we can see that he is not looking forward. He's opening the hip while the knee should be pointed forward. Instead of sidestepping, we can see that he opens the hips, externally rotates the left one and internally rotates the right one, and lets his arm hang loosely to the side. We can also see that the center of mass is pretty high up. Instead of breaking with the left leg, he uses the right leg to break and then goes to the left. During the back step, we can see that his center of mass is behind his feet. And what happens is that because they are behind his feet, it's easier to fall over, as you can see in this example. His lack of skill is due to a lack of technique, a high center of mass and, and poor limb alignment. Now we're going to watch Athlete 2 and see what kind of capacity issues he has. So first up we see him in normal speed and then we're going through the whole process and see what we find when we slow it down. So first up, when Athlete 2 has to brake, he already starts braking halfway. This may indicate poor eccentric braking force control. During the sidestep we can see that the center of mass is also pretty high up. But he does make smaller steps than athlete number one and engages the arms more. Whilst backpedaling, you can see that he keeps the center of mass in front of the feet to prevent him from falling over. So in athlete number two, we can see that he can maintain a low center of mass without compensating in his lower back, and also that he has poor eccentric control because he has a hard time braking his acceleration. And now we're going to take a look at coaching cues and the interventions. So for athlete 1 I made the training program, this is his ramp warm up. We start off with the standing transition arm drive, which you can use to improve the arm drive technique and the rate of rise rhythm. Next up we're going to the A walk, where we want to see balance, the feet forwards and stiff torso. Then we go to the A skip, where we keep reinforcing the correct arm mechanics from shoulder, not the elbow, and the double leg contact with the grounded leg. And we use the ankling for tendon stiffness and to keep on the ball to foot so that the ankle is dorsal flexed. The forward and lateral lunge are precursor drills for the acceleration and the change of direction. And then we do the pogo jumps to reinforce muscular tendon stiffness. And the speed skaters to help prepare for lateral braking forces during change of direction movements. To improve him on the field, I would give him some cues on what he should look out for when he is running. For example, when he's accelerating, drive the ground back as aggressively as he can. Make it feel like you're falling over when you start. For his track and field sessions, I've chosen some exercises which he can perform, where we reinforce the positions that he needs to be in to successfully complete a change of direction or an acceleration. We also do these exercises to reinforce a low center of mass, and we can do that also via cueing. For example, pretending that he's going to hit the roof with his head. And now we're going to see Athlete 2 ramp warm up and training. Athlete 2 ramp warm up looks pretty similar. We also have the A walks, the A skips, and the ankling for the same reasons that we do with Athlete 1. We also perform the sleeper stretch for the shoulder to mobilize the internal rotation. We do the forward lunge and the lateral lunge, same reason as with Athlete 1. And we also do the pogos and the single counter movement jump. The exercises I've chosen for FLE2 are more focused on linear acceleration. So we start off with the lateral bended walks because he had a problem during the agility t-test. After that we have the wall accelerations to reinforce the 45 degree angle. The same goes for using the sled. The bounce we do to teach him how to separate the arms, knee drive and to keep the ankle dorsiflex. Thank you for watching.